Hi everyone and welcome along. One of my favourite things to paint in watercolour is lots of little miniatures um, and today we're going to do a little afternoon tea scene. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay it's very important you've got a really sharp pencil for this because we're going to do a bit of drawing um, and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to this. It's actually one of my patrons requested it uh, because you're allowed to, uh, well one of the perks of being a patron of any tier is you can submit suggestions for YouTube tutorials. Right, anyway, let's get on with it. So, I'm going to draw a teapot. So there's a sort of round, a round ball shape, but then I'm going to just raise it up a bit. This is quite a fancy afternoon tea. We're all a bit obsessed with afternoon tea in our country. It's quite funny. Um, right. Not really basing this on any particular um, crockery collection. <laughs> I know, I'm just, it's all just coming out of my head. So, um, might be interesting. So we've got a, a lid and then we'll get a, a bit of a base for it. I think um, Mrs. Potts in Beauty and the Beast, I guess. And then we'll do a spout, and I'm going to have the spout sort of coming just slightly around the front, just to make my life that bit more difficult. So if you imagine the spout is like that. And then we'll have That handle on the back. We can come up with some lovely sort of designs for uh, what the pattern will be. For uh, for a cup, we'll have a U shape. We'll have a little foot on the cup as well, just to match the teapot. And um, we'll have the handle just sort of there, so. That's nice, and of course it must be on a saucer. So we'll just imagine a nice round saucer going all the way round. There are quite a lot of round things in afternoon teas, so it's a bit of a challenge, but I think that's looking rather nice. Okay, we'll have a we'll have a plate and we'll also have a nice sort of afternoon tea uh, cake stand. So we'll do that a bit next. Yeah, this is a great practice at drawing ovals and, and circles and round things on a on a bit of an angle so I'm going to make a cake stand so we're going to have some uprights we'll have another another tier to it and then a, a sort of nice canopy handle over the top and some little feet we'll give it a foot at the bottom there as well little feet so we'll put some cakes on those and we'll have a nice plate or two Lovely, okay, and I think we'll have a teaspoon just coming off the edge. So there's our spoon. 
coming off there and a fork So this is what I do when I'm doing these of initial drawing and then when we actually get to the um, the painting of it all we'll be able to make a bit of sense of it. Okay and then on the tray I think we're going to have some sandwiches and some macarons so I'm going to do give us more ovals <laughs> to draw <laughs> and a nice sandwich so we have uh, sandwiches cut into triangles well actually they're not necessarily always cut into triangles but it seems a bit fancy This is definitely quite a challenging one for us to all paint today, but I think you lot are, are really very good at painting and um, I have to keep up with the uh, the increasing talents. I need to stop teaching you so much, don't I? Um, but yeah, I'm always absolutely thrilled. One of the really nice things about Patreon is people can show me their work on our discord server which is really nice so i'll do some up on their ends okay that's nice that was quite a lot of drawing please don't be put off what we're going to do now is we're going to lightly rub out the pencil with a, with a rubber that's just not taking it all off, but we just want to soften it. And I promise you that that was probably the hardest bit. The rest of it's gonna be really nice and simple. Okay, so we're going to actually begin with some dark tones, which seems a bit strange, but once we add water and plenty of it, we are left with a really useful, very pale, shadowy mix you can see there we go we just need to add lots of water in the palette but I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to this pale colour and this is how I'm going to begin so with this very uh, delicate shadow we're creating the base colour the base layer of all of our crockery and essentially I want to have it that it's white but white is never just pure white because it's all about what it's reflecting in the shadows so you can see here I'm able to use this very pale color as a sort of well, it's almost sort of showing it up on the page, isn't it? So I'm leaving lots of unpainted space. But I am bringing each item to life and very swiftly, I'm sure you'll be pleased to see by just thinking about what are the contours, con contours, sorry, what are the contours of each item? Where's the light hitting it? Where's the shadow hitting it? And what's also great is I can paint in and and know that things can be painted over the top and they'll show up just fine. But it's amazing to think that this colour comes from those two. But it's all about water and that is the beauty 
of watercolour is it's all about unsurprisingly all about the water okay so we'll let that dry and then we'll start painting in all the lovely bits of detail for all the metal so the cutlery and the I'm gonna do the like the stand I've decided to go for a gold tone and keep everything the same so I'm using yellow ochre to begin as my base color um, and I'm just sort of painting it in with my size zero brush here leaving highlights um, unpainted space painting it in quite fluidly because I'm also going to just drop in a little bit of cadmium orange also burnt sienna actually is a good a good color for a low light so whilst it's all still just blending but um, yeah, yellow ochre is the sort of initial base colour. So begin with yellow ochre and then see where you go from there. You could always add in a little bit of cadmium yellow as well. So you can see by just using a range of these tones, you build up, even in a very sort of illustratory, whimsical little drawing, something that looks quite realistic. Now I'm gonna go down to a smaller brush for the cutlery, because it's just that little bit more fiddly. And I'm gonna begin just by sort of outlining it with the yellow ochre. clean off my brush and just draw in the colour there maybe get a little bit of a dark dark tone for a, for a low light or there we go try that again with the fork so We'll start with the prongs of the fork and then we'll come up and then over the top with the yellow ochre sort of outlining. And a little curve underneath. We'll do it again over here. So I'll just turn turn the page around. Start with the prongs. And then we'll get up. And then maybe I might need to just sort of give it a bit more shape. There we go. Than I did in the drawing. What can be quite handy is if your drawing isn't 100%, it's still a very useful guide. Right, the other thing our gold can be for is, is details on the actual crockery as well. So we'll paint that in. So, you know, it's obviously up to you where you want to, how you want to pattern your pots and things. I'm definitely going to have some gold and so then I'm going to allow for some other colours. And don't forget the all important unpainted space as well. And now I'm just choosing pastel colours. I've got some hooker's green here to paint in. Sorry, 
some fluff on the brush. Paint in the little macaroons, macarons, allowing for a little bit of unpainted space. I think also cobalt turquoise is a really nice colour for it. Just make sure you keep it nice and diluted. I've got some lemon yellow here as well. And then the sandwiches will be a very dilute uh, yellow ochre as a base anyway. And you can see also I'm not colouring them in 100%. And then when they're dry we can add some, some detail to them. Okay, so now I'm thinking about the... Um, the actual pattern of my crockery and I quite like this hooker's green. I'm going to do a sort of panel around the middle but always thinking about the roundness, the shine And also the fact that this is a sort of whimsical little illustration. So don't worry about everything sort of being really perfect. I was painting a, a fox in snow a few sessions ago and I really sort of enjoyed painting it in a slightly sort of looser children's book style and I just think it had so much more character to it. So the, the constant search for perfection doesn't need to be, uh, well, you don't need it basically, is what I'm saying. And just look how I'm allowing the brush strokes to really stand out here, I'm not making everything perfectly evenly done. I am embracing the, uh, the slight sort of wobble of it all. Okay, so one last dry and then we'll do all the little detail bits. So I've let, let everything dry and I'm using Hooker's Green with a four tenths brush to just add a simple little stripe here and there on the crockery. Um, the next thing actually, I'll use that again, so with the macarons I'm going to take the colour that I did very dilutely and just add a little bit stronger of a colour. My favourite um, children's book is The Tiger Who Came to Tea, which is all about, well, it's all about a tiger that turned up at someone's house and ate them out of house and home. But the thing I loved most about it was the illustrations of the food. And I think this is just the adult me uh, reliving that obsession.
Okay, for the sandwiches, what I'm going to do is use a little bit more of the yellow ochre just down the crusts. And then we'll put something in it. So I think it's a sort of safe bet to try putting a few little sort of, uh, actually I want to wait for that to dry. I think, yeah, I'm just gonna let that dry one second. The last thing we want is to come along with the last little bits of detail and ruin the whole thing. So I'm going to just go around one last time with everything. There were little bits of detail we wanted to put on the on the crockery and on the cutlery. And if you ever pushed for time or whatever, just do a little blot just to double check things are nice and dry. Okay, so if I do a little a little something down the middle, that might be a cucumber sandwich. Um, what's nice is you don't necessarily have to do anything too clever. Maybe you might do a little double double whammy there. And there we go, so the last thing to do is to rub out the pencil and add in just a little bit of shadow. And here we have it with the pencil rubbed out, looking really quite different, quite light and bright, but it's also showing me places where we definitely need a little bit more sort of shadow mix of our, our lovely warm shadow mix, just to fill in areas where, oops, left on the brush. where we just need a little more. And that also kind of means a bit of shadow on some of the items. So that's why it's, it's really important to rub out your pencil before you've finished. Um, that might sound strange, but Rubbing out the pencil isn't going to be the last thing you do, basically, is what I mean. And then with a larger brush, I might just get a little bit more Payne's Grey into this. Keep it really dilute though. This is where we get the, uh, the proper bit of shadow going. It's the bit that can seem a bit scary, but honestly, it's the best bit. And well done for sticking with it. There we have 
a lovely little afternoon tea illustration. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below. It makes such a difference to our channel with your engagement. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye.